Hey folks, Captain Dave here. It's getting to be that time of the year where the bait stealers will sort of eat you alive when it comes to live shrimp. And um, we're experiencing a lot of it on, on the my trips. Uh, you got to, you know, every time you're in the river and you're near an oyster bed or a rock, I fish a lot of rock piles, rocky areas, because H-A-R-D means F-I-S-H. We've got, you know, hard bottom, that's where critters live. Um, so that means that's where some of your big fish are, okay? And when we're looking for trout, you know, I never leave the dock without my float rigs and, of course, a live well full of live shrimp. But the problem is you get a lot of bait stealers. And those bait stealers this time of year, more than anything else, is pretty much little tiny mangrove snappers. So it gets to be a certain point of the year or time of the year that even myself I consider myself pretty much a live bait fisherman because nine months out of the year, that's what I use. But, uh, like I say, it gets to be a certain time of the year, and your jig and soft plastic will catch the trout, the reds, the flounder. And I know there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that do it all year round. Not me. I'm not a... I'm not an all-year-round lure fisherman. But what we have been doing in the last just couple weeks is been pitching a lot of jigs, jigs and soft plastics. And what I have here in front of me, this is my jig box. Okay, there's some of my soft plastics. And here's the other half of the jig box. Okay. And it's all different size jigs and different types of soft plastics, but I don't go crazy, okay? I use certain kinds because, of course, that's what I have the most success with, and there's certain reasons why I like a certain type, okay? And you'll pick up your aggressive fish, your aggressive trout, your flounder, your redfish, where you can cast and you're not getting, you know, your bait stolen all, every two seconds by the mangrove snappers. I mentioned it on my Facebook page the other day how I highly recommended H and H brand jig heads that you can easily get at Academy Sports and Outdoors. And while I was in there stocking up again, the you know one of the guys in there says uh, I. I could. I told them all the popular looking jigs were pretty much gone, and the unpopular ones were, of course, still sitting there. And around here, you know, we a lot of people like a short shank jig head. And what I'm talking about is something like that. It doesn't have a big long hook on it, okay? So, I've got some here. Let me find them. And I don't even use them. Okay. I just, these came with just a, a purchase on eBay. But here's just an example, okay, of the ones. Let me try to get the package open here. Of the jigs that will just sit, okay at most bait shops. There you go. See that? That's the ones that are still sitting on the shelves at Academy Sports and Outdoors and many other bait shops. Okay. See how long that hook is? And then that shape of head. Not very popular around here. They're more popular in places where, let's say, the Kakaho minnow that H&H &H produces. It's a long body with a paddle tail. 
and you're putting the hook, getting that hook further back in the bait. So that's the reason why those are made, to get the hook further back in the bait. In Northeast Florida, these just aren't a very popular jig. But you go to something more of a short shank, um, and all of a sudden it's more popular. And maybe it's because you can quickly go from a jig with a soft plastic with a short shank hook to a jig with a live shrimp on it that quick. Okay. You put a live shrimp on here, and there's a lot of jig hanging out with a little bit of shrimp on the jig. Because how I always hook my, my live shrimp on is if this is the tail of a shrimp. I go two digits in from his tail and would take the, the hook point and go straight down and through and then turn the shrimp around. And now this is his tail. This would be his head. And then bend him in the shape of a C and pin him on again. Okay. I'll go over that one more time. This is the tail of the shrimp. I go two digits in because... Shrimp have digits in their tail where they flex. And I go from the center top through the bottom. So now the jig would be in there and there's your shrimp. And then I turn my shrimp around and I go through again when he's in the shape of a C. Now his tail would be down here and up here at my knuckle would be where his head is. So when you pitch him and he's on the bottom or you jig him, he looks like he's in a snapping shape. You're going to pop him and he's already in that C shape. Okay. And another thing is, uh, yeah, you're killing your shrimp, you know, basically by hooking him twice like that. He's not going to, I mean, he's not going to be kicking and swimming around, but if you've got the head and the body going through and the jigs going through the, the tail portion twice, that means that if they want that tail meat, which pretty much all fish do, they're going to have to go through the hook twice to get it. And remember, he's doing the kind of a snapping shape when he goes to, uh, when you go to jig it. But when you do that with a jig like this, there's your little shrimp. And there's all this jig head sticking out. Where if you go with something with more moderate, smaller hook and a shorter shank hook like that, which is just a ball headed H and H jig with a gold eagle claw like 575 hook. They're gold hooks. Okay. Ver uh, going from a jig like this with that big long shank to something more like, say, a H and H ball headed jig with a shorter shank, you can see the difference. And the hook gap here between the shank and the point, let me hold this up, is if it's it's damn near identical in every way. Okay, that distance, but look at the size and the length. Okay, so around here, a lot of people prefer, not these, but something more like this. Okay, it's going to be less obtrusive when your shrimp is on there. You don't have all that jig hanging out to get hung up on something, you know, stuck in the jetty rocks, stuck in the bottom. Okay. And just a plain old ball head, you know, jig really just plain works. Um, it's more of an arrow head shape uh, of this one. It's not really mattering that, that much between the two shapes. So don't get all caught up in that. But you take a jig like that and you can put a shrimp on it. And you can put a soft plastic on it at the same time. You can go from back and forth. I do that a lot at the jetties. I'll be using a jig like this. And I might have a soft plastic tail on it. And 
I can easily take the tail off, bam, put on a shrimp, put on a doubler, double fiddler crab. That's always uh, the kind of jig that I would use for a double fiddler crab and, and the shrimp. Okay, it's going to be very hard to see the difference. Well, not, it's not going to be that hard to see. But this one, the ball head is bigger, of course. The jig in its length and hook size is not that much different. It's, if it's, ident it's probably identical. But this would be more like a quarter ounce. This would be more like a three-eighths ounce. And it's funny because, you know, you go, let's say you walk up there to the aisle at an academy or your local bait and tackle shop, and you got these super fancy jigs, you got simple jigs like this, you got kind of goofy jigs like this with a big long shank hook on them, and every one will be, you'll pick up a quarter, a quarter or three-eighths ounce, and you look at that jig, and you look at this jig, and you're saying, how can this jig be a quarter ounce and this one be a quarter ounce, where the hook is so much bigger and heavier, and the lead just doesn't seem. So you can't get caught up in the weight as much as just what works, okay? Um, the other day, we had some guys, we were pitching jigs, we are catching trout, we are having a great time. But, even on this quarter ounce, that was falling and getting stuck in a lot of rocks. The Velcro bottom, that was getting stuck. So, if the current wasn't that strong, if the current wasn't that strong, I switched them over to the smaller jig. Okay? But, the reason I was in Academy... The other day, and I post, like I said, I posted it on my uh, Facebook page about H and H jig selection. They've got it going on. Uh, Gulf Coast Company, you know, they're I think they're based out of maybe uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or Houston, or something like that. They've got different kinds of jigs to select, different length hooks to select. Uh, different colors, different hook actual types. They've got the gold eagle claws. And then you could turn around and right next to them, you'll find the tout. Well, this is called a tout head. T-O-U-T head. Okay. And then it's got a nickel plated hook. Really stout hook compared to that hook. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not. Basically the same size hook. But this is a, like a cadmium plated or a nickel plated hook. And that is a lot tougher, thicker wire than this one is. And then one thing you got to remember too is the thinner the hook, the easier it penetrates. Sometimes the thinner the hook if you get stuck, the more you'll get it back because you can bend that out. And then if it's not, if it doesn't ruin the, the hook point, you can bend it back and maybe get another cast out of it, okay, or another fish out of it. So that's a little bit about the jig heads. And I'm going to show you what is predominantly my favorite setup. And I'm a little prejudiced because... Um, the guys over there got me started using them, and on my first cast last February over in Louisiana, which isn't saying much, I mean, they got more trout than they know what to do with, but on my first cast, I caught a trout on it, so I've been kind of stuck on these lures. You might read my reports where I talk about the uh, dockside bait and tackle matrix shad. Okay, well, this is the matrix shad. And there's a lot of paddle tails out there. Lots and lots of paddle tails. Okay, you got your bass assassins, your DOA, cows. Um, they're your bigger brands. You got um, you got H and H. Same people that make the jigs. They make one called a cockahoe minnow. 
Okay, it's got a little dorsal fin on it. Well, one thing I have found that I am absolutely, I'm sold on is the fact of what the Dockside Bait and Tackle guys, the thought they've put into their paddle tail. At first glance, this is, you could lay, lay them all right next to each other and you're really not going to see a whole lot of difference. Is, number one, that matrix shad is completely flat on the surface or on the very top. Completely flat. Then, like a fish, it tapers down to a point here on the bottom. All right? And then goes to the tail, which is pretty much standard size paddle tail. Okay, catches the water and moves back and forth. But I can tell you for whatever reason, the way they're designed, this bait on a jig head not only paddles, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this. Okay. And that V shape in the bait. Hopefully you can see how that's sort of shaped. Okay. That's what's giving it the rocking, 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 rocking as it goes through the water. And one thing that I do is even on baits that have a round front, many times I take a knife and I'll cut them straight and flat like that. Because this is my favorite jig head, the H&H &H tout head. Okay, remember I told you about the touts. Okay, little bullet shape. Okay, white, it doesn't really matter. I don't, I don't get really all into the colors. Actually, this one right here is my absolute favorite. There's a tout head, stout hook. It's got a stout hook, short shank. It's got what they refer to as double barbs, okay, to hold the plastic on. And it's got the flat back of the actual jig head here. It's flat. So when I do put the matrix shad on this, when I put it in and I thread it on and I get, get it in there, I bring it up to the center of the bait and I push it on. The flat front of the matrix shad meets up with the flat back of the quarter ounce H&H &H lead head, which is the tout head. So what we have there is a very streamlined bait because I still want to take it as much advantage as I can of the shape of this. So when it's drawn through the water, I get that wiggle, 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 side to side, side to side, side to side, while the tail paddles at the same time. Okay. <coughs> and around here, just, just me, I'm no lure expert. I'm just saying, for me, and that's all that matters, I don't really care what anybody else is doing. For me, in the St. John's River, a dark bait like that really works versus something light colored, okay? That, um, I don't even know what color they call this, all right? And there's another bait that we did fantastic on last Monday. And that is this one, which it's not my favorite because it's got a couple little different things about it. Is that right there is called a deadly dudley. Okay. Let's say in Louisiana, if it's got a sartreuse tail, they love it. Okay. And the deadly dudley. I think they call this maybe the Bay Chovy or something like that. It's got the round front on it. But what it has 
is a concave bottom. This is concave on the bottom here. So as it falls, it's doing the wiggle, 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 fall and fall and kind of thing. It's kind of jerking back and forth, wiggling as it falls. And then, of course, it's got the paddle tail. Big difference, though, between the two. The Matrix Shad is pretty, it's got a nice, real softness to it. When you go and you put the jig head through the plastic, it's not overly soft. I've had some baits that are really overly soft, and they tear on the first fish. These are pretty durable. They've got that mixture down perfect, but at the same time, I break out the V and G, Deadly Dudley, okay, and this is a lot stiffer bait. That's a lot harder plastic. And another one that's very hard is the Kakaho Minnow from H&H. &H. Okay. But I really prefer over the two. This is a little bigger. It's got this keel down in here. This one, everybody's got a new mousetrap, right? This one is concave down here, okay? And then it's very easy to find these with a little sartreuse tail. But believe it or not, we were using these the other day, and it was whooping them. It was whooping them something fierce, the old deadly dudleys. And the reason we were using them is because we were pretty much burning jigs. The guys, you know, the guys were getting caught in the rocks, and they were burning jigs left and right. And I didn't really want to burn up all my dang Matrix Shads because I only had so many with me. And I had a whole bunch of Deadly Dudleys in the box. But here's a couple other colors. You know, I don't go too crazy on colors. Like I said, I'm not going to be, I'm not splitting hairs here. Okay. But I use the darker colors when the water's dark. And I'll tell you something, in the winter time. At the jetties, yellow mouth trout, speckled trout, red fish. That's when I would go, I've gone to my really light colors, like the pink champagne here, and this lemon head color, okay, of the Matrix Shad. They do very, very well when the water is really, really clear, okay. So I stick to my darker colors. Um, up in the river right now, like these, and then I go to my lighter colors when the water is really clear, like these, and like these, and I, you know, they all, no matter what color they are, they still got that matrix shad shape, that's the shape of the bait, so, I mean, you got all different kinds of choices as far as jig heads are concerned, I mean, I've got some of these, okay, these are like bass assassin jigs. They got like triple grippers, they got a little aerodynamic head on them, they got little eyes, and then they got the black cadmium hooks, or the black mustad super duper hook, kind of a big hook, I think. But I've, caught a, I've been using these just because i got tons of them. And I got these in supposedly quarter and eighth or something like that, ounces. But, I mean, let's say if this is a quarter ounce. This is what they're calling it. Let's say they're calling that a quarter ounce. And then H&H &H is calling this a quarter ounce. Okay. Really, which one's got more lead on it? Look at all the lead going down this hook. Look how the thinness of that hook. You got the ball head here, but does this ball head here weigh the same as the head on this one? But then you got this really thick black, nickel black hook here, probably a must add. Does, this, does that hook weigh more, maybe, than that gold eagle claw? So that's what I'm talking about. You've got to find what works for you in the depth that you're fishing, okay? So, 
but believe it or not, I mean, here it is. I usually use just that hook, that one right there, okay? That's supposedly a quarter ounce tout head unpainted. But when I went to Academy the other day, I picked up what they call an eighth ounce because I was running out of really light ones for throwing over big time structure because we don't want it to sink straight down in it, okay? So you can see the size there. That's a real small jig head with a really small head on it. And we're putting the matrix shads on that and pitching it over the rocks and stuff like that. So it won't get as caught. But then again, this might be referred to, let me see if I can find them here. But then this is another H and H round ball head jig. This is the H and H tout head jig. They call this an eighth, and they might call that an eighth. Really, I mean, I don't have a little tiny scale, so I don't put them on and check it. But I would assume this one weighs a little bit more than this one. So that's just one of those things you got to think about when you're doing your jig selection. But I'm sold on the matrix shad, I can tell you that. These baits here have been catching fish for me ever since the first day that old Captain Chris over at Dockside Bait and Tackle in Slidell, Louisiana gave me bags of these. And I went to the Industrial Canal in New Orleans. And on my first cast, I caught a trout. And on like my up to my seventh cast, I was catching trout. A little bit different than here. You just don't walk up to a place you, you don't have hilly nilly beans you, you don't know anything about and pitch out there and start catching trout. But these have worked for me where I've gone out all day and done nothing but throw plugs and jigs. And I've caught fish all day long on just these. Okay, they're not scented. Man, it smells like silicone rubber to me. But one thing you can kind of do, you catch a fish, you know, you catch a trout, they're slimy, they're slimy. Just take some of that, take one of that slime on that trout. And make sure you rub it around on there and throw it back in the water. There's a little scent right there for you. Okay, and it's free. So um, I've got videos from last summer. And that's the reason I'm doing this one, where you can gear up, get yourself a good jig box going, get some of your favorite soft plastics, and you can hit some spots in the river, and you can fish plugs, and you can fish jigs and soft plastics, and you can catch trout and flounder and redfish, and you don't have to worry about all those mangrove snappers and all that, okay? But not every day can I go out and just say, we're lure fishing, okay? It's just something that I, I get people who maybe, you know, don't even, you know, they've never fished a lure before. So I'm going to give them the best opportunity to catch fish, and we're going to use some live bait. And then as we get going, we'll maybe slide into this on a couple spots, and we'll throw these. So that's a little bit about jigs. A little bit about soft plastic tails. Uh, set yourself up a jig box. It's good to have this time of year. Eighth, quarter ounce, and three eighths ounce. They're about the only size jigs you really need. You can go to the you can go to the uh, store and you can get half ounce and three quarter ounce and all that. If you're fishing and you're beating the banks like most people do, and you're fishing some of the structure in the St. John's River, you really don't need them big heavy jigs. Now if you're out off the bank and you're in 25, 35 foot of water or something and you need to touch the bottom, that's where your heavier jigs are going to come into play. 99% of the time I'm throwing an eighth or a quarter ounce because I'm throwing my jig in and around structure. So it's a little bit about jigs and gearing up for this summer 
and uh, I hope you learned a little bit. And if you're out with me, I'll have a spinning rod and a jig and a matrix shad set up for you. All right. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs>